Howdy my total is always tubular gamers we're back with you guessed it another video thanks for coming back to the channel if you're new here maybe stick around for a while I got a fun review for you today we're going to be doing a review on the game heading out but before we begin I do want to give a shout out to the publisher Saber Interactive for hooking me up with this game thank you very much I was looking forward to it so heading out it's this really strange stylized driving game but there is a lot more going on here than just that it is also a roguelike it has resource management and there's actually a bunch of narrative to this game as well yeah it seems a bit all over the place and there hasn't been a ton of information on this game since it was announced a few months ago and now it's here and so hopefully I can provide some clarity and information on what this game actually is but before we get to the review a word from today's sponsor Hey, that new Fallout show has been all over the headlines for weeks now, and you know what it made me want to do? It made me want to go play some of the older Fallout titles, and if it made you want to play some of the older Fallout titles, but then you realize you don't actually own them, fear not. That's where today's sponsor comes in, Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming can offer every Fallout game imaginable at crazy low rates. We're talking super low prices. You want to play through New Vegas again? Here it is for under $4. Maybe you're in a Fallout 4 mood? Here it is for 5 bucks. When I mean cheap, I really do mean cheap. Maybe you're an old school Fallout fan? Here's all the classics for under five dollars instant gaming really prides itself on not just being another key site everything here is from authorized sellers they even have 24 7 customer support so for your convenience i've posted direct links to all of the fallout games on instant gaming these are all personalized links so buying any of these will help out the channel you can really save some money here once you're on the site you just got to make an account and you can start getting games instantly thank you very much to instant gaming for sponsoring today's video so heading out, like I said, it is a stylized, roguelike, narrative-driven driving game with some resource management. It sounds like I just threw a bunch of marketing or fancy terms at you, but no, this game really has everything I just described going on. The game is a pretty simple premise on the surface. Clearly being inspired by 70s car movies, it sees your character a fugitive driving across America trying to get away from something for reasons. I won't go too into specifics since it's a little spoilery, I will just say that your character is a bit in Infamous and a lot of people know who you are and that you're driving across America. They talk about you on the radio and you seem to be wanted by not only law enforcement but several other individuals you'll come across while going across America. The game does have a bit of a narrative focus. There isn't like a bunch of cutscenes or a ton of characters or really any in-depth characters, but there is a number of themes and choices you'll get to make throughout the game that really will influence the narrative and what happens to certain situations and how it either goes well or it might not go so well. And at the start of every act you'll actually get to make a few choices and the game will try to tailor its narrative for those choices and while it's not anything huge and really at the end of the day the story still goes out kind of the same way it's cool that certain situations can go a few different ways and you might get some different rewards based on how they go but enough about the narrative let's talk about the gameplay what even is this game how does it play there's really two types of gameplay here there's the main driving where you control the car directly and it's like any other driving game you'll either be racing people trying to dodge traffic get away from the police or get from point A to point B and then there's the menu gameplay where it takes place in between all of the races and driving sequences you watch your car move across America you actually get to choose which path you want to take and there's some resource management here and on top of this there's a bunch of roguelike elements here there's a bunch of random factors that can affect every single run there's a few things you got to take into consideration there's your focus your character can fall asleep and will fall asleep there's money which is needed for gas if you run out of money <laughs> you're not going to get very far because you can't fill the car up and then there's also fear fear is constantly chasing you you only have so many hours to get away from the fear you can try to get away faster but it'll use more money and if you fall asleep you'll lose several hours to fear and if fear catches you yeah it's game over to boil it down what you're trying to do is get across America from point A to B before the fear gets you and there's several things that can stop you or speed you up the random factors include where you're driving to America and what events you'll come across as you're driving across America. There's actually a few different events. There's like the race event, driving through traffic, trying to get away from the police, and then there's a bunch of narrative ones as well where you interact with a certain person. Usually you get to make a choice and depending on the choice you make you might actually get a resource or you might get something taken away from you. For instance, one of the random narrative events that shows up is you find a hooker on the side of the road, you can have sex with them, and if you do that, you lose an hour to fear, or you can just totally ignore it and there's no consequence. Sometimes it's not that black and white though. 
But you know what is black and white? This game. Ooh, that was a smooth transition. You got to give me some credit there. The game has a very striking art style. Well, yes, it is mostly black and white. Red does show up and occasionally blue, but for the most part, it is a nice black and white art style. Again, it is very striking. I think it looks nice enough. It is an indie game at the end of the day. And at the very least, I can say it is a unique art style. At least the game ran totally fine. I didn't have any issues with it there. So hopefully I've properly explained what the gameplay actually is. It's this mishmash of drive and roguelike elements and resource management with a bunch of little narrative seeds thrown on top, but does it actually work? Is it any good? Well, yes and no. I think this game gets things right and I think there are some good aspects to it, but I also think there are some things that aren't so great with this game. Let's start with what you'll do a majority of the game, the driving. The driving in this game, it's all right. The cars handle and control fine enough, but it's not particularly amazing. It's very arcadey, but I wouldn't say this game has an amazing sense of speed. Like it gets an okay sense of speed. When it comes to the collision detection of the physics, it's pretty eh also. The driving, it's it's just all right, but I don't think it's going to wow anybody. And when it comes to the level design, yeah, this certainly isn't going to wow anybody. It very much feels like it's randomly generated. I'm pretty sure it is randomly generated. And really, for the most part, you're just driving straight on a highway. There's some twists and turns. There might be a little shortcut or an area where you can go off road. There's usually traffic all over the place as well. And there might even be a jump, but the level design feels very just thrown together again randomly. I'm sure it is since this is a roguelike, but your first race that you do in this game isn't going to be all that different from your 25th race. Like the level design is very just Dull, to be honest and I could really say the same about the driving events as well doesn't really matter which difficulty you're on the AI are just total pushovers I never had like any issues with these races the dodging traffic events just get old real fast you just drive pretty slow through the traffic so you don't beat up your car that is another resource you have to manage is your car's health you know you can't actually total it but I was never even close to totaling my car and then the chase sequences where you're trying to get away from the police are just a total joke. You got the whole squad laughing at you because the police just cannot even come close to catching you. If you turn even slightly off the road, veer a little off the road, you pretty much lose them instantly. And maybe it's just me, but it never really felt like there were any high stakes in these events. And that's really not what you want for a driving game. You want it to be exciting and engaging and it to feel like there are some stakes here. Like you got a lot to lose, but I just never really felt that, especially because I was just kind of steamrolling it no matter what difficulty I was on. And I'm not some pro gamer out here. I generally don't consider myself all that great at games, but I really did not struggle with this game in terms of the driving sections at all. When it comes to the menu stuff, things are a bit more exciting. I think the item resource management puts a unique spin on the gameplay and it actually does add some stakes. I actually felt more pressure and higher stakes on the menu than the racing itself just because I'm like, okay, I'm looking at how much money I got. Can I stay awake? Is the fear going to get me? This was a bit more exciting and I think it's the best part of the game. Actually managing your resources to make sure you can get across America was more exciting here. This is decently implemented. And I think there's a good amount of random factors, enough roguelike elements to keep this interesting throughout. Do I personally wish there were more? Yes, I do. I think more randomization, more roguelike factors, maybe the fame and reputation actually really meaning something would have actually added to the gameplay, but I think there's enough random elements here that it keeps your runs interesting and feeling a little different. Like maybe this is going to sound a little crazy, but to me, just watching the car move across the menu and strategizing what I'm going to do at every stop or what resources I need to manage was kind of better than the driving. The driving is okay, the races are okay, but the menu and resource management gameplay really got me engaged. Something else that I'm pretty mixed on with this game is the narrative. Now the narrative is one of the focal points of this game, it's all over the marketing that it's a narrative game. but. I'll be real, I'm pretty mixed on this. I just had a really hard time giving a shit about any of it. Maybe it's just me, but the dialogue and the writing just did not really interest me. It just didn't really resonate with me, and I was just kind of like, eh. And by the end of it, I was just kind of like, oh, I guess it's over. Like, the radio conversations, I just didn't really like these. And then the interactions you have with all these characters, some of them are funky and weird. And the ones that go really out there, I think are the best of them. But a bunch of these are just kind of there and nothing really happens. And then the choices you make really don't mean much, especially at the end of the day. 
The choices you make at the beginning of the game really have no real effect on the narrative, and then the choices you make while you're actually out on the road usually have very little consequences. Like, at the very worst, you might lose an hour or two, maybe you get into a police chase, but the police chases are so low stakes that it doesn't really matter. Like, maybe I didn't come across enough of these interactions. It says there's a good amount of them in side quests, and I feel like I did a decent amount, but I wanted some with, like, really high stakes, where, like, if you make the wrong decision, it can really fuck your entire run-up. One where, like, it almost totals your car, or something grand like that. Maybe that's too punishing, but I think it would have made the stakes higher, would have made your decisions really mean something, and at the end of the day, it would have made the game more engaging. It sounds like I've been playing a little bit of armchair developer here, with the whole, this game could have had that, or it should have had this, but those were just my thoughts as I was playing the game. I have played hundreds, thousands of games at this point, and those were just my unfiltered thoughts that I'd like to share with you. I very much know from first-hand experience game development is hard, but I feel like there are a few things that could have made this game more interesting throughout. And as it stands, I'm pretty mixed on this game. There are a few things I do like. I like the striking art style, the music is half decent, and I think the whole resource management gameplay is actually good. But there are some things I don't really like. I don't think there's enough randomness. I don't think there's enough roguelike elements. The driving is just kind of whatever, and the story I really had a hard time connecting with. And yeah, I just walked away from this one feeling pretty mixed overall. The game took me around five hours to go through its main acts, and there is definitely some replayability with this being a roguelike, but I feel like there's not enough roguelike elements to really create all that much replayability. That and the final boss totally glitched out on me, which was super annoying. And so the question at the end of the day is, do I recommend the game? Do I think it's worth it? Okay, that's two questions, but my answer is the same to both of them. Maybe. I am very down the middle on this one. Like, if you like driving games, maybe you should check it out. If you like roguelikes, maybe it's worth it. If what I've talked about has interested you, then yes, I think you should check it out. But if you're not huge on driving games, if the art style doesn't speak to to you or it just doesn't sound all that fun then i think you should skip it i'm not going to go out of my way to really recommend this game even if you're on the fence like there's plenty of other driving games you could play that are better at this game's best it's okay and at its worst it's just a forgettable game that six months down the line i'm gonna forget i even played which isn't the nicest thing to say i feel like i've been pretty negative this video more than usual but i feel like this game could have been so much more i really wanted it to be more and i just didn't really love it so thanks again to saber for hooking me up with the game hopefully you're not too mad at me for not loving it, but I'm gonna share my unfiltered thoughts whether I liked or disliked the game. Either way, let me know how you're feeling down below. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. See y'all later. Bye bye now.